Hi there, and welcome back to another Bob Blast. Hi, I'm Bob Burridge, and this one is about a subject that often gets very confused about three things, value, contrast, and light source. Let me show you what works for me. And so, as promised, this first part is about value. You know, when color comes out of the tube, it's the darkest it's ever going to be. Whether it's black, red, or yellow, it's the darkest it's ever going to be. So we artists give it a value. It's the darkest, it's number 10. And then when we add water to it, or white, or a lighter color, it goes down to nine, five, and four, three. That's called value. It's really important to understand about value. We're not talking about specific colors. It's the values. Let me show you what I mean by that. Here I have some black. So if I put some black down, that's pretty dark. Pretty dark. But as we go across the page, as you can see here, I'm adding more white or water. White or water. I'll even use a little white here. Here we go. We're talking about value. Look, it goes all the way down here. Look. So now we have the darkest dark to the lightest light. No matter what the color is. So this, we give it a value of 10. This is gonna be important later on. Mid-tone, five. Mid-tone is a five, it's middle way, right? And all the way down to zero, no color, pure white. That's called value. Don't get the two confused with contrast and light source. Now let's get into contrast. So this is about contrast, the value of 10, against the value of zero and everything else in between. This is one of the things I like to do early in the morning with black paper. Can't get any darker than that. I got black paper, so this is high contrast, black against white, very little bit of in-between values. You see here, one right after another, working with graphic design, strong warm-up exercises. These are my practice pieces, working specifically about contrast. If I want to go to the softer side, I have values that are really closer together, like six, seven, eight, and nine. See, six, seven, eight, and nine. There's no lot of ones and zeros against tens and nines. Here it's all about the midtones, starting off with a, like a five midtones. This is what I like to do in the morning. I make that decision before I even begin the painting. As I said, these are my warm-ups, my practice pieces, just to kind of get myself going in the morning. Not even using color, but I will do color with the same intensity, whether it's the tens or the zeros or the midtones, all about contrast. And knowing that this is going to be dramatic in your face, this is more gentler, more romantic, quieter, that kind of a thing. That's the decision you make before you do the painting. Is it going to be dramatic in your face, really shocking people, or is it going to be soft, gentle presentation? Again, these are the decisions you make before you do the painting. This is why I write it all out first in my journal. So that's about contrast. Now let's switch over to about how do you do that with a light source? You know, I'm so honored to jury an awful lot of art shows. And when I look at them, I notice that there's the ones that don't win are the ones that just don't have that spark, that snappiness, no contrast, and they have no idea where the light source is, let alone where the shadow goes. And they just have no energy into them. So what I wanna show you on this next step here is knowing about value, contrast, and where's the light coming from. So a simple thing like this, this is one of the great things I like to practice, how to do a simple ball, light source. You can see a strong light coming across here, you have a strong shadow, the shadow also helps to anchor it. A lot of drama. Let me show you how I make it work for me. So the first thing I'm going to establish is my mid-tone. Always put in a mid-tone. You see that in a lot of your art books. So that's somewhere around a five. I'm gonna show you how you, how do you know that's a five? Well, how do you know it's a mid-tone? Real simple. If I put black and white on top of it and I can see it, there they are, the three values, the darkest dark, the mid-tone five, and the lightest light. Having established that, let me show you about the light source. Okay, so before I do a painting, I make sure I put a mid-tone. Let me rub that all over the place. We're ready to go. A um, mid-tone. I'm halfway done. It's not the darkest dark. It's not the lightest light. And you can see that I've established I put the darkest and the lights and I 
No, that's the midtone. Here we go. Let's do a simple ball. Simple ball. There's your ball. Again, any three-dimensional object, a vase, flowers, portraiture, there's your ball sitting on a table. There we go. Now, now's the time to establish where's my light coming from. Sometimes I'll put an arrow off to the side to remind myself, this is where the light's coming from. Now, this is the, a five, this is the midtone. If this is going to be the lightest, I'm going to put in the lightest. There we go. Just do it with my finger here. Shining on that ball, right? Now, surprisingly, that light is shining on the ball. It's also shining on the wall in the back. Look at that. We're thinking of a theatrical spotlight. A beam of light. Now, I have that part. There's my lightest light. There's my mid-tone. Now my darkest dark. All right. There you go. Darkest dark. The wall. Back here for more contrast. I'm going to give it even more contrast by adding more dark. So this will be a ball sitting in the light. Could be a fruit, pear, vegetables. So I have here, look at the values, the three values. Dark against light, dark against light. Now with the dark on my brush, anchor it. Put a shadow underneath it. There we go. That helps the viewer know where the light's coming from. Even make it darker. More contrast. Wow, it's sitting down on this table. Well, there we have it. Dark against light, dark against light. Again, whether you're doing portraiture, uh, flowers, or fruits and vegetables, that's how you show the dimensionality of this painting. Dark, light, dark, light. Almost like a checkerboard. Very dramatic. I don't have the values really close. This is very dramatic. Here's an example. Using some softer tones. It's still dark against light, dark against light. Even if you're using color, look at this. It still is big blue ball. If you're doing color, it's the same thing. Dark against light, dark against light. Practice this. That way you can do this a lot easier when you start using color. Here's another one. Dark against light, dark against light. Make sure the shadow goes away from the light source. This is when you discover you have a dyslexia. You have the shadow going towards the light source. It goes away from the light source. And again, if I'm doing a pear or fruits or vegetables, it's dark against light, dark against light. Very dramatic. Let's do the same thing now using color. Dark light, dark light. You're going to be so tired of hearing me say that. Here's when all the colors are really subdued. Still dramatic, still dramatic. Dark light, dark light, still dramatic. Pears, fruits and vegetables, practice this. It sounds so silly, but boy, it's gonna really teach you how to paint and have that dramatic effect and understanding value, contrast, and light source. That's so important. Where is your light coming from? Duh, I don't know. Figure it out before you do the painting. That way you know where to put the shadow and the dark side. That's the Bob Blast about value, contrast, and light source. Practice this. I hope this helps you. Hey, I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Here's something cool. The phone. Take a picture of your painting with the phone. Switch it over to black and white. You'll see the values right there. I do it all the time. If you don't have a phone, hey, a red piece of plexiglass. Look at your painting through a piece of red or green plexiglass and you'll see the different values if you have enough values. That's how this works. Great tools. I'll see you on the next Bob Blast. Hey, it's me again. Hey, I just wanted to tell you about some workshops that are coming up right away. And this is the beginning of my new season, and it's uh, uh, down in Mexico, in Puerto Vallarta, 10 miles south of Puerto Vallarta, in a place very famously known as the Artist House, also known as Casa de la Artistas. And we have to go down there. I love going down there. This would be, I don't know, sixth or seventh time for me to go down to, to do a workshop. And it's January 
20th. Who doesn't want to get out of the United States around January, go down to Mexico and Puerto Vallarta? It's just us in a village, a fishing village. It's fantastic. You hear the little boats early in the morning. That's where the mountain uh, rivers come down and meet the mouth of the ocean. So you hear the best of both worlds. It's just a fantastic place. And they, we stay there, we eat there, and we paint there. And a couple of side trips to out. Uh, maybe I had to go out and look at the whales or something like that. It's a great place. I hope to see you down there. Uh, then my first workshops here in my studio in California is, um, what do we have here? March 26th to the 30th. It's a loosen up five days, loosen up. It's kind of like an art school. I do a demo, you do it. I do another demo, you do it, and back and forth. So we get 10 students there in the workshop fantastic environment by the way you know and uh who wants to uh, not go to california in the winter time so that will be march 26th to the 30th and i can't wait to see you here it fills up and uh, for more information make sure you go to robertburge.com thanks for watching